The internet's are here, we've got the webpage uh, for imagej.net. And I do strongly encourage you to read through some of these pages because there's some useful information here. Um, they give some guidance about how to upload it to your um, computer. They've got a download section. Uh, they've got a license information section. It's free, uh, it's open sourced. And also if you are at the point of writing any sort of scientific reports, whether it's for undergraduate work, whether it's through papers or just general reports, um, you can cite the, the usage of this um, here. We've got the appropriate way to cite the source. Uh, you can actually, as you get more experience, there's a lot of plugins you can add to this. So we're going to use some very, very basic introductory functions on this. But the one thing about using these kind of uh, software is to explore. Explore it, and that's the only way you get to, and, and do trial and error, to get more familiar with it, to determine what other functions it has. And a lot of people have uh, added these plugins which uh, basically do certain functions that would help uh, other people in their work, maybe doing automated counts. Uh, so it's definitely some a, a really incredible tool with a lot of versatility around it. And more importantly, it's free and open source. Open and we have this window which appears here. And we're going to open our image of the graticule. And there we go. So we have the line tool here on this Fiji window. And we can draw lines here. And basically what we are aiming to do is drawing a line across the scale and then telling Fiji what size that is so that we can calibrate for our image measurements that we're going to be making from this point onwards. Now there's one issue here. I mean, we well, first of all, we know that this is one millimeter in length, as we mentioned earlier in the video, but how do we really know that we've actually lined up this properly with these lines that occur at the end of the graticule. We can't, it's too small. So we need to kind of zoom in so that we can get a reliable measurement. So I'm going to press the, go back to the Fiji window and press the magnifying tool. And you can left and right click on the image to zoom in and out. So that becomes a little bit clearer. But I still wouldn't say that I'd be able to confidently align it really, really perfectly or as, as best as I can on this graticule. So I think I'm going to have to zoom in further. So that means that we have to work with a smaller part of the graticule rather than the whole one millimeter length that we have. So we kind of have to figure troubleshoot which area we're going to look and make sure that we know what measurement that is. So on here we have, again, this is one millimeter and one millimeter is how many micrometers? I hope you said a thousand. So it's a thousand micrometers. And we have these kind of longer integer sections sticking out from the scale and we actually have 10 of those we've got one there two three four sorry four five six seven eight nine and ten so thousand divided by ten that means the length of this section is going to be 100 micrometers so now that we know that what size that is, we're going to zoom right into that so that we can get a clear image. Okay, so now that we have the image zoomed in, we're going to go back to our line function and we're going to draw a line. So there's a couple of things that we need to consider to make sure that we get the best, uh, most accurate reading as possible. One of them is when we draw a line, you know, if we go to this section, say here, how do we really know that that's really the straightest it can be between these two points. We're not really sure. So we can actually use the framework of the graticule itself to help guide us. So we could actually use this point to line this up here, or what I commonly do is I'll use these ones at the, at the bottom level to help guide me across to make sure I've got a straight line. So we can kind of use the framework to help guide. The other thing is we all notice that there's actually a thickness of line that we have to deal with on this actual long integer itself. And you'll see that some parts are perhaps a little bit blurry here, but more solid here. So this is where a really consistent approach is very, very important for calibration. So certainly make really good notes about how you approach something because you'll, you'll likely need to apply that again and need to make sure you've got notes to help support that to ensure repeatability. Now, I, I can see here, this is to every individual's different sort of preferences. 
I can see there's a kind of a blurry section here and then it meets a kind of solid section of dark colour here. So I tend to take the interface between those two as my consistent approach, but you'll find your own consistent approach. And then I go across and I have my line. So I'm happy with that, that looks great. One thing to take into consideration is uh, you'll see that sometimes the lines don't look perfect on the image uh, and you may feel inclined to make sure they're as straight as possible. Don't do that because remember the digital camera does move a little bit on the microscope so we have no idea whether this actual graphical image is, is perfectly linear in itself. So just work with the graphical framework so that you can get the best reading as possible. So we have a line and now we're going to tell Fiji how big that line is. So we go to analyze and then we go to set scale and you see there's a whole bunch of numbers here that we can deal with. So we have distance and pixels, which I'm not too worried about this point, but the one thing I am concerned, uh, one, the one thing I do want to program is the distance. So we know that this is 100 micrometers uh, in width and we have to put the unit in here. That's why I just put UM. And one thing you do want to do is make sure that you have uh, a note of the scale, the pixels, because if you close Fiji, um, at some point and want to revisit it and open it again and you know you're working with the same graticule and set of images you can actually apply this number here um, into your set scale without having to go through this calibration uh, so that you can get the perfect repeated calibrated um, application for size but of course if we do that we always check that the calibrations worked afterwards which we'll do in a moment the other thing in this window we want to select is global and that basically means we are globally applying across any images that we open in this application or in Fiji. So we're globally applying this calibration that we're setting in terms of size. If we don't select this, the minute we open the next image, we don't have any kind of scale to work with. We lose that calibration. So that's a really important factor to keep, to take, keep into account. We press OK. And then, of course, we're good researchers. We want to confirm that the calibration has worked before we continue uh, our measurements in our other images. So I want you just to kind of look at the Fiji window here, which I'm kind of like wibbling a little bit. So as I hover my mouse over the image, you'll see a whole bunch of numbers like moving around. So I'm just going to extend that slightly so you can see this. Now I'm going to draw a line and I want you to watch the Fiji window here as I draw a line. And you'll see that a length is appearing on the text that's in, in terms of the numbers that's changing. So you can see there, we've got a, a, the value for length after doing the calibration. But unfortunately, when you kind of stop making the line on, on, on your image, it disappears. So this, I use this as a really quick reference to see whether the calibration's worked or not. So I'm gonna give that a go. So I'm gonna take the approach again. So I'm gonna measure that same point. So I think that's roughly where I am and it says 99.20 micrometers on the image J window there. So we're never going to be perfect. 99.2 micrometers I think is a, is a very good number. It's very close to the calibration. That's great. And the reason we do is it's just making sure that we haven't maybe miscalculated uh, the, the, cal the graticule size when homing into these kind of smaller sections of the graticule. So it will we're going to test that out. So we'll go back to the magnifying glass, zoom out, and use the line. So I'm going to measure the whole of this graticule length now, and we should get something relatively close to 1,000 micrometers, which is one millimeter. Okay, and it says 999.42. That's a great number. I'm very, very happy with that. I would be concerned if, if you were maybe at 970, 980, you may want to think about doing the calibration or working on your approaches to get the best uh, reading as possible. Um, another reason we do this is making sure that we haven't maybe made a mistake in typing the value in so we're not out like by one digit. So maybe we have 99 instead, instead of 999. So it's just a good way to make to verify that the calibrations worked. In this case, it has. Okay, so the other thing we can do while we're here, I'm going to zoom out of this image again. 
I'm going to make a scale bar in here. And this is something that we should do for many images that we work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a line at the bottom right hand side. So usually when you have a scale bar put into an image, it's usually on um, a corner. And I think most of the time I've seen it on the bottom right or better bottom left hand corner. So I've got my line. I'm going to go back to analyze and then I'm going to go to tools and then I'm going to, go to scale bar. Okay, so we have a similar window as to when we calibrated, but it's different options. So we can actually tell it how big we want the scale bar to be. So usually the scale bars are usually kind of a, a fraction of the size of the overall image that you're looking at. You don't want it to dominate the image. So in this case, I think I'm going to use, uh, let's see, usually it's like rounded up numbers like 100 or 200 micrometers. So I'm going to put 200 micrometers. We can tell it what font size we want it. We can tell it what color we want the scale bar and the text to appear. So we don't really want white because in this bottom corner of the image, it's very light already. So we want to pick a, uh, a good contrast color. So I'm going to pick ooh, black, there we go. And, and it actually um, picks selection different areas for you. Well, you've got, sorry, you have options in terms of where it can go. You can have it bold, you can have it overlaid on another image somewhere, but you can see it's appeared here and we can change that if we don't like it, go to light gray. So you can play around with it to see what you like. But I tend to stick to whatever the default function they have apart from the color. I wanna make sure I have a good contrast and I don't really like the, the, the bold too much. I think it's a little bit too uh, imposing, but that's just my preference. Okay, so we have the image, then we have our scale bar, which is great. Now the other thing we have to do is, with the image with the scale bar, we need to save this now as a separate file, because otherwise we lose that scale bar that we've added. So we then go to um, save as, and we can save it in different types of images, TIFF, you know, there's a whole list of different options, and I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. And here I'm going to put graticule with scale bar. So you just put whatever, whatever you want in there. And again, we just want to make sure that that's actually worked. So we're going to open that image. Ta-da! And there we go. We see it's got the scale bar and it kept it. So that's a successful um, scale bar, scaled image through Fiji. And we're going to make sure our global application that we mentioned before has worked. So do the quick reference of the line along there and it should be somewhere around a thousand micrometers. Yep, that's good. We're happy with that. So it's definitely got the global application. So always be mindful of that. And when you're um, getting numbers from measurements and things, always reflect on those to make sure that they sound about right relative to or like scale bar. So that's a graticule. And the next thing that we're going to open now to practice measurements is go to the Sedgwick Rath itself for a bit of a change of scene. There we go. Okay, good. So what we want to do is we want to measure the width here. Or do you go from, from one side of the black line across to the other black line to the other side? That's perhaps what I would do. And then I go to measure and you've got shortcuts next to these functions here. So here we've got command and M and what will appear is a little table of results. So when you first open this, you'll likely get more result, like more different readings uh, than you need. So to change those, you can go to the results section at the top here. You can go to set measurements and you can actually like deselect everything. So I've already done that here. You can tell it how many decimal places. We are working with very, very small sizes here in micrometers, so the decimal places are really not necessary at all. Um, however, if you're working with bigger scale issue, things like meters or centimeters, then that becomes more feasible to use decimal places for. But with micrometers, we have a variation in, our, in the way that we measure things of a few micrometers, so we really don't need those decimal places at all. Okay, so the one thing we can't get rid of is the angle, unfortunately, but that's fine. We can, we can get rid of that later. So I've got one measurement there, and I'm going to take another measurement here. Command M, 
Oh, look at that. Consistent. 1,002 again. Let's see if I can get a third time lucky. Oh, not so lucky. And... Look at that. So they're all pretty close values for the four sides of the square of the Sedgwick graph to sell. So you can actually save these files. You can go to Save As and you can save them as CSV files and they can convert them to Excel later. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to make sure I know what I'm measuring and keeping a good track on what, what exactly it is I'm measuring uh, because you, don't, you can't really add much more detail in the results table here. So what I tend to do is actually copy and paste these into an existing Excel file and then get rid of the parts I don't need anymore. The important thing is if you're making measurements on these images, have really good traceability as to which image you have taken these measurements from. Because if you need to repeat something, rather than having to do everything again, uh, you can then just go to that particular image if that was problematic in terms of like maybe error misreading. So the next image we're going to open is a histological section of the sea urchin gonad tissue. So this is something students are going to be commonly using in my lab, so I think it's quite good to feature it. Uh, so here we have um, a cross-section of a female. And we know it's female because we have these like eggs here. So I'm just going to zoom in so you can see those. Look at that. So we have these eggs here. You can tell the eggs because they have this kind of nucleus here. They're not perfectly round like you would expect because these tissues have been embedded in wax and then processed through a very fine slicing machine. So this section is about seven micrometers in thickness. So they become slightly warped in their shape. So quite often we'll need to like measure the, the egg size um, using the circumference to figure out what the actual um, diameter of the egg is for an approximation of size. So here, this, and also we have these dark tissue areas, which are kind of this dark purple. And these are the reproductive cells. This lighter, pinker section, these are kind of nutrient storage areas. So we've got some here as well. This is nutrient storage within the gonads. The gonad in urchins acts as a reproductive tissue as well as a nutrient storage site. And we call these nutrient um, cells nutritive phagocytes. So that's a bit of a quick overview of what a sea urchin histological section. Just again, we're going to practice doing another scale bar. So we're going to put the line there. We're going to go to analyze, tools, scale bar. I've already taken my previous settings, which is great, apart from the width. So I'm just going to do 200 micrometers there. And again, looking at this, this actually looks reasonable and similar in size to our previous pictures. We can do a comparison later on. And it's overlaid. Okay. And it should look during the room width. Yeah, so that's good. Great. And then we save that and we continue as we go. And that is how you use Fiji to calibrate image sizes and make measurements.